Back to another video guys, it's all about transformations of shapes, it's all about transformation geometry, uh, make a difference with transformation dedicated to functions. So it works pretty the same, but right now we are on transformation dedicated to geometric objects. So we are going to consider and revise translation, basically it's horizontal and vertical slides, basically combination of both horizontal and vertical or in each particular case might be horizontal and vertical shapes and we're gonna go through easy medium questions uh, that are prepared for you that's definitely the topic for year 9 but students of year 10 and year 11 also can use that as a revision all right so let's get to the first problem pause the video try to do by your own and the first one the first question a is all about finding vector of translation. So I just remind you guys that the vector of translation is simply the vector uh, that keep track of uh, sliding of your object. For example, you, keep, you can keep track of one single point. For example, let it be point A. And right now I put vector A uh, from, uh, sorry, uh, from A to D, I put vector of translation V, but you can choose any point in the original triangle ABC because this triangle uh, during translation fit into new triangle EFD. All right, so that's the vector of translation V and we need to put the coordinates. So first I mark vector V as to, from A to D and right now we need to fix the coordinates. All right, so just remember X coordinates of this vector is supposed to be a horizontal shift because as you remember from a vector from vector theory each vector can be decomposed by two other vectors so that means in Cartesian plane and XY set we can describe our vector AD as the sum of vector from A let's say to A star and if A has coordinates 2 and level of 8, that's y coordinates. So right now, during translation, horizontal translation, we've got a prime or a star with coordinates negative 4 and 8. Okay, so that means the shift is simply the difference between coordinates minus 4 and 2. So how to find that x coordinates of the vector of translation is simply final position minus 4 minus initial one, which is 2. It's going to be minus 6. All right, so we've got x coordinates as minus 6. All right, so we can fix x as minus 6. And right now we just doing a vertical shift down from A star to our final position. That's going to be vertical translation. In this case, it's going to be y component of the vector, which is below. So right now we need to count from the level of 8, here is the drop from level of 8 to level of 2 because d coordinate, x coordinate is negative 4, the same as for a prime, but for y we have 2. So that means there is the drop from 8 to 2, which is also negative 6. Negative six. Again, if you moved, um, if you moved uh, against your x axis, x coordinates of the vector of translation is going to be negative. This is the same. This fair for uh, direction against y uh, axis, as in our case, it's drop. That means it also can be. It should be negative. All right. So we've got components, but just for comparison, you understand that you can choose any any vector I mark as yellow one so you can keep on track for any point you like for example if you keep on track of point B that's also be transferred and get new position E in this case but both vectors are going to be the same this is also V and the components of vector V of course they should be the same this is fair also for point C all right in question B, we need to find distance which each point A, B, and C have been moved by during this translation. All right, so because 
Definitely, during translation, each point, each vertex of the triangle will be moved by the same distance according to the fact that uh, translation uh, is the same for every single part of your object. So that means no matter which vector v we're going to consider, we can just consider vector uh, v with coordinates minus 6 and minus 6 and just do it algebraically. So just remember how to calculate that distance. Of course, you remember that we can use Pythagoras. This is if you don't remember how to calculate from scratch, if you don't remember the formula for the distance between two coordinates. But I just remind you that this is the simple fact of Pythagoras theorem. So let's have a look. Uh, AD is hypotenuse, while, for example, that side from A to A star is going to be in the length of 6 units, absolutely, and the length for, from A star to D is going to be also 6. So that means you want to calculate the absolute value or the magnitude, so this is the magnitude of vector v because the vac vac each vector has the magnitude and direction. Right now we are going to calculate magnitude. So, But this is the same as you want to calculate the distance from a to d and by definition because this is hypotenuse, right, we use triangle from the triangle d a star a, so that one, uh, we can figure out and work out AD as hype. That means we need to take the square root of 6 squared and 6 squared. All right, so we've got 36 and 36, we've got square root of 72. That means AD is going to be square root of 2 times 36, right? But we know that square root of 36 is 6, so that means final we've got 6 square root of 2. If you're not sure, just make sure you remember uh, how to simplify thirds. It's all about that. If you like, we can calculate that square root of 72. If you use just calculator. And we've got around 8.49. So AD distance approximately is 8.49. All right. So, I hope you understand, and that means we can move in pretty similar problem. So, the same questions, but now triangle is different. Let's do it quicker. So, right now, pause the video, try to do by run, and right now I'm going to explain how to do it quick. So, point A, for example, we keep on track point A, we fix vector V. Right now, we're thinking about horizontal shift, it's from 2 to minus 4, it's going to be minus 6 units, and what about vertical shift, it's also down, that means we've got from level of 8 to level of 6, from 8 to 6, that's going to be minus 2, that means answer for question A is simply minus 6 x shift, and minus 2 it's y shift. That means we arrange coordinates for the vector of translation v. So in b question we need to do the same. So right now we just simply use uh, minus 6 and minus 2 as the sides of the triangle and that means we can calculate the v lens which is in this case a d segment. Okay and right now we take in the square root of 6 squared is 36 plus 2 squared, which is 4. So we've got square root of 40. So right now, let's do and calculate straight away square root of 40. That means right now we've got 6.32. So around 6.32. All right, and let's move to the last problem. So here you do have uh, uh, rectangles, which also shift it down. So in that case, I would take, yeah, I would take the same way from point A to point E. That's much more convenient. 
And it doesn't matter which shape you translate, you keep on track just one single point. Even if you have really like weird shape you've never seen before, like sort of like, I don't know, uh, with some curve, uh, you know, with some curve uh, boundary, it doesn't matter. You keep on track one single point. If you know the coordinates, that won't be the problem to that. All right, so let's mark uh, vector V. In this case, we just need to find vector of translation means we need to define the coordinates. So here is our vector of translation and let's set up the coordinates. So X shift is from two to minus four. So it's gonna be minus six again. And from level of 10 down to the point E, which is gonna be from 10 to four, is gonna be negative six again, okay? From 10 to uh, four, it's gonna be negative six. So we've got minus six and minus six. In the case you want, if you want to calculate the magnitude of the vector or distance, uh, that point A has been moved into new position E, you just need to calculate magnitude. All right, so, and let's finalize with the last pretty easy question. If you do have several translations on the way, what do you need to do? Of course, you need to make superposition of those vectors. In other words, you need to uh, fix and work out the total result and vector of translation. So let's set up V1 as the vector of translation with coordinates 3, 2. That's the first vector. So the second vector, V2, will have the new coordinates 4 and negative 5. How to find the resulting vector? If you have several transformations, several translation in, uh, in a series, okay? That's going to be definitely translation by vector V, which is the result of the vector sum of V1 and V2. All right, so how to work out the sum of two vectors? Simply, you need to add coordinates. So you write 3 plus 4, you add x coordinates, and you do the same. Uh, if you like, I can maybe write in more details. 2 plus minus 5. Okay, so you just simply add coordinates, corresponding coordinates, and that's how you work out the resulting vector of translation. But right now, so that's the result, 7 and minus 3, but right now I'm going to show you how you can do using a graphical way. So in the case, just if you're given, you know, the problem in my math, for example, source, and the sometimes you need to drag vectors and range this sequence. All right. Let's mark vector V1 as yellow and let's mark vector V2 as the pink one. All right, so first I'm going to drop the yellow vector with coordinates 3, 2. No matter where you start in position, okay? If you do have 5, okay? Uh, so for example, if you do have mm, 0, it's maybe easier to start from 0 from the origin. And that's fair. So you have three and two, that means you have three units horizontally and two units up. So that means it's gonna be your vector V right there with coordinates three and two. So this V1, all right. Now you attach another vector using the tip to tail rule because right now you need from the tip of your first vector V1, set up vector v2. So the coordinates 4 and minus 5. So that means from there, that's your starting position, you need to move 4 units horizontally, so 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5 units down, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to be the final position. So indeed, that's going to be 4 and minus 5. Okay, so let's connect the starting position from there, to the final position right here. And that's going to be vector v2, all right? Now, according to the rule, if you do have two vectors, you can use triangle rule for vector addition, for vector addition, all right? So if you do that, just remember, the resulting vector I will use 
the green color is going to be from the very first uh, from the start of the very first vector to the very end of the last vector so that's going to be the resultant vector v okay that we calculate here and let's check the coordinates let's do that so x shift is going to be seven units in total so that means that's x coordinate all right so what about the the vertical shift it's gonna be three units down so that means this is gonna be y coordinates and graphically we also can work out coordinates of the resultant vector using just diagram vector diagram but this requires you to remember the rule how to add vectors so that's uh, very necessary i'm pretty sure that vector topic is not for year nine so feel free and just cover this topic on my channel because i also have lots of videos dedicated to how to cope with vectors if you're new uh, if you're new in this topic so please watch and i hope i explain it translations in full so there might be several questions dedicated to more complicated problems so i hope you like that don't forget to subscribe if you're new here on my channel and like this video of course if you like that share your comments which video you would like to see in the nearest future and i'll try to create and by the way sorry uh, i was busy doing my dance channel so if you're interested in dance you can also visit my dance channel so daniel dallas uh, how to dance all right so search it and i hope you'll enjoy thank you and see you next time